Hey there, it's me Red and welcome back to Heyday. Now in today's video we're going to focus on all of these brand new changes that came within the actual town update. So I really do like the way that things are going and I've got really comfortable with playing with the new changes now. But let's just cover some general aspects first of all. Now general play is all about just working on the rewards. We're looking at the experience points which is actually kind of good within the town so I thoroughly recommend it. You've also got the heart reputations to aim for and in addition to that you're also aiming for some coins. Now the town itself is relatively easy to play but it's also rather challenging because you do need a lot of resources. So keeping your visitor board as a main focus you can actually prepare a lot of goods and then when you go into the town you can pick up the visitors points that have actually been given to you by visitors that have been collecting by your hoodies. Your train arrives dropping off a load of passengers. Now, once they drop off the passengers, they go into the actual idle part of the actual menu board. Now, I'm going to be covering all of these little different parts of the menu board as we progress within the actual video itself. But basically, when visitors are coming, you're literally just turning them around. You're sending them to the buildings, you're serving them based on the orders they're requesting. And then once they've actually finished going to each of the buildings, they will either leave or they will go to another building. So it actually depends on the visitor in general. Now there are quite a lot of visitors. When it comes to specific tasks, you've got event activities, you've got derbies, you've got your regular play as well. So the actual town is used quite a lot within the actual game of Heyday itself. Sometimes it seems easy, sometimes it seems challenging. I think the most challenging part for me is actually leveling up within the town itself. Because there's a lot of reputation points that you need and it's not always that high in relation to the buildings and the visitors that you're actually getting. So once you've upgraded your buildings, you can start to work on gaining a lot more. Now upgrades itself, you can upgrade the number of visitor slots to a maximum of six. You can reduce the time for service. The turnaround time is a lot faster. You've got your XP and reputation points upgrade as well. And then there's also the extra coins you can gain within the actual building. So there's a lot that you can do within the town. Now each upgrade is going to require specific materials. So I would strongly recommend working with your hoodies on this one. If you haven't got a large neighborhood, then start asking people within the Facebook groups and again getting support of a lot of people. Checking the newspaper is also another good place to actually go to get the expansion materials you need to upgrade the buildings. The more buildings upgraded, the more visitors you can turn around, the more visitors you can turn around, the more prizes you get. And the prizes do contain a lot of goodies. There's expansion materials both for the town and for the farm itself. In addition, you've also got the sanctuary in this area as well, which is where you have your three animals and your puzzle books. You've also got the actual ocean as well, where there is a floating chest that you can actually open sometimes if it's unlocked, gaining even more prizes. But let's start focusing more now on the specific playing aspects of the game. Now the first one we're going to look at is the visitor tap. Now this one's actually very very easy and you don't actually have to go into the town hall or any of the buildings. You've got your visitors walking around and all you need to do with your visitors is to touch them on the head. Now it's not as easy as it seems so I would recommend actually zooming in on the game itself and then finding the visitor and tapping on them. Now once you do tap on a visitor, the menu will come up and then you have the opportunity to send them into a building. Now while your visitors are in the town, they are walking around, or at least until you send them to a building. So you have the choice to actually leave your visitors just walking around or you can actually send them to buildings and then they will be waiting within the buildings. I kind of like my visitors moving around because it adds to the actual aesthetic feel of the town itself. And I do wish at some stage that Heyday would actually give us some visitors that would just be within the town just walking around that are not part of the actual going into the buildings part itself. So just general visitors or just people that are there. And I think I would really, really enjoy this. So imagine if we had a train coming into the town, just dropping off some passengers. They're just part of the background aspect of a normal town. These visitors would be walking around. They would just be enjoying themselves. And then they would just get on another train that comes later and then disappear. Now, they wouldn't be part of your grand total. They wouldn't actually be connected to any of the tasks you've got to do. So in some ways, I do wish we had this option. 
Right, now let's come back to the visitor tab. Now, like I said, all you've got to do is just look at those visitors and then tap them on the head. So I'm going to focus on three specific visitors here. And then I will send them to their specific buildings as well. Now, the ones I'm going to be choosing are in the actual grave site area just located in the center there. So we've got a few visitors walking into this area now. Let's start tapping on them. Now, we've got Brandon the local here. So he's one of the characters. Remember, all the characters are given names. Now I'm going to send him to a building and I'm going to choose another one. So Samantha, the actress, again, sending her to a building. So off they go. Now look at when you actually do tap on the visitors. Look at the little footprints that appear. Those footprints are actually telling you that they're going to a building. Now, if we follow Samantha, the actress, there she goes. She walks through the fence and through the wall. She goes down the side of the actual track itself. And whoa, she moves really quickly. And I mean really quickly. But then she changes her mind. She goes back again and she walks down the side again one more time. And then she changes her mind and said, no, I think I'm going to go to the building now. There she goes back again, walking through my bushes and until she disappears into the building. And now she's actually gone. So all of those three visitors I tapped on are now within their location. Now, what I can do is actually just tap on those person give them their goods and then they are being served so this is one way of dealing with visitors that are actually coming to your town now again i can speed them up if i want to and by scrolling through the image there you can see the number of coins the maximum experience points and the reputation points that you will be earning for that specific visitor in that specific building so that is the visitor tap everybody very very easy just tap on the visitor send them to the building service them turn them around Right, now let's jump to the actual menu option itself. So we go to the town hall here, we click on this building and up comes one of the menu points that we're going to focus on. So let's break this down into specific sections just to guide you through what it's actually doing and the key focus on the changes. Because I do like it and I must admit I'm pleased with the way that it's actually going. Right, now the first menu we're going to look at is the idol. This is where your buildings arrive, you send them and they just literally walk around so they're in your actual town itself they've not been allocated they're not going to any buildings they're just there walking around now some of them will have the green tick mark some of them would have footprints and they are basically in visitor order so if you look down there you'll see adele alice elizabeth and victoria so they're in name order for the actual category of the visitor now, if you are doing a Derby task, this is going to make it so much easier because you'll see all of the visitors here are grouped together. So you haven't got to hunt through your list of visitors to find the ones you want. If you're doing a specific visitor, you can just click on that visitor there and then send them to the building. So as an example, if I wanted the salesman here, I've got four salesmen actually located within my town itself. I can click on them, send them to the building. If I wanted the local, I could do the same thing here. Now, like I said, it's nice in this aspect. Now, previously we used to have it, so it was focused on the number of buildings. But I must admit, I like this change a little bit more now I've gotten used to it because it's actually visitor focused however I still kind of miss the option of actually having the buildings that have been done or not done put in a better order but you make one change then it kind of like is different in another aspect now what I can do is to actually start clicking on those people and then once I clicked on them they come up and then they can send them to the building. So I click on the visitor itself, the menu opens up, there's a see visitor and a send away. Now I'm not going to send anybody away unless of course I don't want to do them and sending away means they walk back to the actual train platform itself and then they walk away. But if I just open them up the visitor pops up and then I literally just click on that building. Now, what I'm going to be doing, first of all, is focusing on all of those with the green tick mark because they've already done one or maybe two buildings. So I want to finish their cycle. Once I finish their cycle, then I can actually claim their prizes. So you're seeing me here scrolling down, choosing the ones that have been done. Now, I'm not doing a specific activity at the moment. OK, I'm kind of doing the events that are ongoing but I'm not doing any visitor to Derby tasks. Now, if I were doing a Derby task, my playing style would be very, very different. Right, now once I've done all of those for the actual building, I'm then going to switch patterns. Now, you've got visitors that go to one building. Usually these are visitors that you've picked up from your neighborhood station. 
and you go to your neighborhoods station and then basically you collect the visitors and they require only the one building maximize that personal train pick up the maximum 10 visitors you turn them around really really quickly and that's a lot of rewards and experience as well now you then got the visitors that want the two buildings now that's usually my playing style and i'm kind of happy with this but it won't allow you to get the maximum experience points you can get for your town if you're looking to gain more XP and to level up rather quickly, then you really need to focus on the people that want three buildings and not send those away. Now, like I said, my playing style has been differently until rather or until recently, and I've only been doing those for one and two buildings. But now I've kind of changed it a little bit and I'm focusing on the three building visitors as well. This means they want to go to three buildings. Now, that means it's more of a challenge. It means that I can't always do my visitors all of the time. So I'm going to have people waiting and have people idle because the buildings will be greyed out. And it means then that when the next train arrives, maybe there's no room for the full capacity of passengers. So you do have to make sure you keep an eye on your passenger quantities based on your town. Now, my actual town hall is maxed out. It's a 42 passenger, and you can see there's 42 people actually within the capacity at the moment. I'm completely full up. There's no space for any more. So if a new train arrived, I, I wouldn't get any new passengers. Now, as I'm scrolling down through this list and sending them to the buildings, you will notice that some of the buildings are greyed out. So, for example, the grocery store. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have the building. It means that I've got the building, but it's maxed out with visitors. So each building can contain six visitors. I'm hoping that as Haiti develops the town a lot more, that they increase this capacity. Like with the machines, as an example, you can have up to nine slots. So why can we not have the same within the town? Because technically the buildings are like another kind of machine. So I would wish and I hope for the future that Haiti thinks about maybe adding nine slots as a maximum for each of the buildings. So that will be literally another three additional visitor places. And I think that could make the town a little bit more interesting and give us the ability to maybe level up the town again a little bit more. Because 42 visitors is nice, but uh, if we could have three additional people per building, I think we could spend a lot more time within the town focusing on these visitors. Now, once I've gone through all of the idle, okay, I'm going to have these ones left over I can't do. They will continue walking around the town. I can't send them to the buildings. It's okay. If I choose to, though, what I could do is to send them away. But in this case, I'm not going to. There's a visitor for single buildings, turn around really quickly. There's one for the triple. I'm going to leave it there. It's the coins and the XP I'm going for, especially since I'm very close to leveling up within the game. Right, now that they've actually gone to the buildings, I can actually go through the menu still and then service them. Or I can do the old style, which is just literally tapping on the buildings and then just servicing those visitors that way. Now, I kind of prefer this style. I like to tap on my buildings, service my visitors when I'm not worried about collecting any rewards. However, if I'm doing a derby activity where it's a number of visitors, maybe I don't want to be collecting the visitors quite yet. And with the new changes, I can actually work my way around not collecting, but actually serving my customers without having to worry about that. So we're going to look at that one very, very soon as well. But if you're not too concerned, just serve quickly using the building. It's the fastest method. You just tap on the building, tap on the customers, slide them in or send them away. I, I like that option and I'm glad that's not changed. Right, let's move on to the next aspect. So we've actually looked at the idle passengers now. Let's go back to the menu and let's start seeing who is waiting because you can see all of the bells in the actual building. So this means someone's waiting for me. So let's focus on the waiting aspect. So we're clicking on the town hall. The second tab there is waiting. Now we're going to go from the idle to the waiting. You can see all of these people here within the buildings. And again, they are in character order. And those characters are in alphabetical order. Now I can click on the visitor. It takes me straight to them and I can service them that way. Now once I'm in the building, I can actually then service all of the other visitors that are waiting as well. So I actually haven't got to worry about taking the resources if there's somebody standing outside. So this is a nice little option. You're actually going to the building itself and then you're serving the visitor. Now, I, I kind of like this way. It's very, very quick. If you know which buildings you've been to, uh, it, it's very, very easy in itself as well. And oh my goodness me, I'm not going to do that one. 69 diamonds? No way. I don't mind spending my diamonds occasionally, especially when I'm decorating, but for speeding up visitors, nah, not going to happen. I can ask my hoodies or friends for support if I need to. 
Right, scrolling down through the visitors, serving them, giving them their goods. Okay, moving on to the next one, ignoring the ones I can't do, doing the ones I can do. And then starting them off on their cycle and turning them around. Now, this is the waiting part of the tab here. Now, every time I go back to the building, it resets to the idle. I've got to go to the waiting tab, then I've got to go through the building. Now, this is what I said earlier. Actually, tapping on the building is a lot faster. You don't have to do the serving through the actual town hall. You can literally just click on the buildings if people are in there waiting. It's really easy that way. But like I said, in some ways, you may want to walk around that part of the service itself. Now, I must admit, I do like this one. So I can actually focus on the specific visitors that need to be dumped. So if I'm doing a Derby task, for example, now I could have a lot of passengers there waiting. Now, if I'm actually focusing on one specific character, I'm not going to be sending another character to that building, thus losing that slot. So I can actually focus on specific visitors first, send those to the buildings, and then once I've done those buildings from the waiting, I can then start doing the other visitors that are not as important within the Derby itself. So as an example, my Derby task that I'm looking at as a possible next one requires the teacher. And it's nine of those teachers itself. Now, if I've got nine teachers waiting, then I'm going to service her first before I do the other characters. Because if my buildings are full up like they are now, then I would end up delaying the turnaround of my task. But then again, most of my turnaround points are maxed out for their level. I've got to get to level 28 before I can upgrade at least another stage. Right, now that's that one done. So we've looked at the waiting. There's people still waiting. Not a problem. I will service them later. Let's go and look at the serving part now. Now the serving is a very, very easy aspect. It's literally you've gone from the idle. They've gone to the building. You've actually pressed uh, the building itself. And now those visitors are within the actual building and their time is ticking down. Now you can see here that the gain of visitors are in group order and you can see the different times there. Now that's nice, but why is this menu useful? Okay, well let's have a look at some of the options here. Now if I actually click on one of these visitors as an example, so we've got this one down here that's uh, related to the local. I got five locals there, maybe this is my task. Let's just say that I'm limited on my time and I want to actually speed up this person. Now, by coming to the serving menu, I can actually find all of the locals I've got there. I can speed them up a lot faster without having to look through all of the different buildings. Because you can see there that they're all in different buildings. And it saves me having to jump through the different buildings trying to find a local to actually speed them up. Now, if I click on the local in this case, you'll see there's C visitor and then there's finished serving. Now, if I want to speed them up, I finish serving them, I just press the diamond option. And if I want to go and see it, it's the same option again. Now, looking at the different service times, each service time, depending on how long it is, will be a larger amount of diamonds. Now, the closer it is to finishing, then a small quantity of diamonds required. But if you're looking at like a four hour option, as an example, for us 44 minutes, that's six diamonds there. So it's going to go from quite a lot of diamonds down to almost next to nothing. So it's your choice if you wish to speed them up. Now, I know there's a lot of players out there that are diamond spenders. Now, that's down to your playing style. You don't have to. If you want to go through the actual normal being service time, which will just tick down as it does, once you've speeded up your building, it can be kind of fast. The B&B is the slowest building, the grocer's is probably one of the fastest. Now, if you do click on the C visitor, it takes you straight to that visitor, and then again you've got the option of actually tapping on that visitor and then seeing the diamond. Clicking on another building here, if I go in there, you'll see that there's a visitor that doesn't have the diamonds and one that does. Now, this one that doesn't is a visitor that I haven't actually serviced yet, so I can't really speed them up. But what I can do is to give them their item they require, and then if I don't have it, I can use diamonds to pay for that item. But, yep, no way, no way, no way, not going to do it. Right, that's the actual service part there. So my visitors are going to be servicing, they're going to be turning around, and then we move into the next menu tab. So we've actually looked at the idle, we've looked at the waiting, now we've done at the serving. So they've finished their cycle and they are now ready to be served. So let's jump on over to the ready part of the actual town itself. So ready, ready, ready. Right, back to the town hall again. We go into the menu option there. We come straight across, so idle, waiting, serving, and bang, we get to the ready. 
Now, I like the ready one. This is probably the most important change. Now, if you don't have any visitors there, they're still in the service, the waiting, the idle, it's going to be completely empty like this. That's because your visitors are still working through their cycle. Now, don't worry about it. Okay, if you're doing a derby task ee, and you're running out of time, then maybe you want to speed up, like I said earlier. But until actually the visitors are ready to be collected, it's going to be empty here. So I have no passengers to be collected. So I'm going to jump ahead until later within the game and then come back to this ready option. So here we are. We're back again within the game. We've leveled up. Sweet. So I'm now level 112. So happy about that one. Now you can see there's visitors ready. There are some visitors here in front of the building here with boxes and some without. Now generally what we would do is we would tap on the visitors building and then the visitor with the box will give you the reward. Now it usually like those that are finished or not finished with all the buildings are in the same location. Now if you're not really fussed about your playing style you just press the building, collect all the visitor prizes and some will go to the next building, i.e. we be idle now and some will go back to the station platform. But if you're doing a derby task, you don't really want that to happen. Now, this is where the ready is really, really useful. Look at this. You've got some that have got all the ticks, some have got partial ticks. So I'm going to focus on all of those with the partial ticks. You've got the sea visitor, which doesn't really help because you've still got all of the passengers there. Now, the best option here is the actual collect the reward button. And I think this is probably the best change for me. So I'm collecting the reward here, but not seeing the visitor. Now, these are only those that have gone to, let's say, one or two buildings and haven't finished. So they're now being done. They're coming out of the ready and they're going into the idle aspect of the game. And I'm not collecting the rewards from those that have been done. Which means then later I can actually do my town derby task and then claim those rewards without losing them before I actually get to that stage. So I can actually build up a load of passengers ready, collect a derby task that's for a town and then bang it's done very very quickly. Whereas previously I couldn't do this effectively. I would have to service the visitors and then I couldn't really finish the visitors off because I couldn't get to them. So this change in itself is probably the best change I think because it allows you to service those visitors leaving the ones that are ready with all of the buildings with all of the green tick marks. Fantastic. Look at them. They are now ready for a task and everybody's still in serving or they're in the waiting or they're in the idle. A complete menu filled up. I love this change. It's really, really, really good. And I think most players wants to become comfortable with this option. It will be really good. Now you'll see there that my capacity has gone down as well because two, four passengers have gone home. Now, if you're not worried too much about that, then what you can do is just go and just collect the gifts anyway. Now, clicking on the button brings up the visitor and then you'll get the gifts that way. Or again, like I said, what you can do is click on the building and just collect the gifts quickly. It depends on your playing style. You don't actually have to go through the town hall. Uh, personally, I find, like I said, the actual building itself, if I'm not doing a task, is really easy. Oh, sweet, I've just done the actual Halloween Global event. I like that one. So all my threshold rewards have now been done, and we've just got to work towards that last prize, which is the Monoceum. And then I can bring that into my town design, and I can be very, very Halloween-y. Right, now, I'm actually collecting all of these passengers here. I've collected all the gifts. Now, what they're going to do is to go into the finish stage. Now, the finish stage is really, really important. Some of those will actually go home. Some of those will go to your neighbors. So this one I'm going to focus on now, the two aspects of this part of the game. One is going to be going home, and one is going to be going to your actual neighbors. And that's all part of the finish style here. So they've gone through the idol, they've gone through the maximum, the serving, the ready, and you can see here that my actual town is 3442. I can't actually upgrade it anymore, and I would like it to be upgraded. Okay, I've got one still serving, there's none ready, but there's loads here. Now the ones waiting for a train, they actually uh, are there ready for your hoodies to pick up. The ones that are going home, they've done their two buildings. So every visitor does two buildings. Uh, or shall I say like two towns, not really two towns, but two towns. Yours is one of the towns, and then your hoodies is another one. Now, they are there waiting to be collected. And they will sit there and sit there until someone collects them, or until the actual train comes and picks them up, and then they disappear. Now, I would rather my hoodies come and collect, and vice versa. I would rather that I actually go over to my hoodies, collect the visitors from their platforms, and then service them as well. Because like I said, it's one building. 
So you must actually start communicating with each other. You've got to tell each other, hey guys, I've got loads of passengers waiting on my platform. Now, previously, this was really, really important. But with the new update, there's a new change in the game. And I do like this one. And we're going to cover that in a moment. Now, here are those passengers. Now, I click on one of the passengers. The message is, maybe your neighborhood can pick me up. Another one says, thanks for everything. I visited two towns and I'm going home. This one's waiting for my friends and this one's waiting for my friends. So by tapping on them as well, you can actually see a little message and they tell you uh, what they're going to do. So there's two key messages there. And I like it. I really, really do. I like this little addition to the game. That's an old one, though. Right now, here's my personal train. Now, we're about to see the new change within the game. And I think this is a fantastic direction to go. Now, previously, I would like to pick up, let's say, 10 passengers. And I would go there. There would be all of my hoodies there. And I'd actually have to click on them and then scroll down through each station I would have to visit looking for the maximum number of passengers I wanted. But with the new change, there is a number located under each of your hoodies. Now, I like this. It means that they've got this number of passengers waiting. So there's Greg there with two, there's Jazz there with 11, and as I go down, you'll see it goes from the high number down to the low number. Now, Greg's always there. He is the, the generated character within the game. He's always going to have a couple of passengers, whether it's one or two, uh, but it's your hoodies that are most important now you can pick up a maximum of 10 passengers now i'm going to go to jazz because she's got the maximum number of passengers i want and i can look at them there beautiful look at all those passengers and here comes my personal train so it's rolling into the town now chugga 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 woo woo and we're pulling up to the platform so come on passengers on your get now my actual town is kind of like full up at the moment so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge i'm not going to be able to get the 10 You'll see here the visitors, you'll see them in uh, just a random order there. So it's not really that beneficial. Now, I do wish that this were put into the character order to match with the actual new update. So I think this part needs to be changed as well. It needs to be put into the character order, please. So, hey, Dave, take away the alphabetical order for the names, put it into character order, like it is with the actual rest of the game changes. It would make it so much easier for me to actually scroll up and down and find the characters. Now, going down here, I usually choose the easy buildings first, which is the actual grocers, turns around quickly, and then I start focusing on some of the other buildings. Now, you'll see there I'm maxed out. I can't take any more passengers. It will tell me by tapping on a building or visitor that, sorry, you've got maximum number of passengers. I can only take eight of the ten, which is not a problem. I'm going to take the eight passengers and worry about the next ones another time once I've actually released some visitors from my hometown itself. Right now, those visitors get on. I can't pick up the other two. They're staying there as well. So basically, she's got three passengers there now waiting. My train goes down the track past her personal train, and it keeps going past the sanctuary, and I like that one. So there it goes. Beautiful smoke design there. I really do like that. I like the way it spirals. Now, where is that train? Okay, so here it comes. It's coming into my town at the moment. Again, it's rolling down the track, goes past my little uh, walkway there. Watch out for the visitors on the platform and pulls up in front of my station. Those passengers that I've just picked up will now get off the train. And then they will go into the idle part of the menu. So the cycle starts again. But these passengers only want one building. Beautiful. I like that. Because it's the gifts that I'm focusing on. Now that train then finishes, it goes straight down the track again, and once it goes all the way down, it will then start reversing back up the third track, which is the one that runs down the side of the sanctuary just there. Now I do like this part of the game. I like the animation. I like the way that it actually does this. Now once that train pulls up to my actual station itself, it's then going to go into maintenance mode. Now my maintenance mode is actually not that long, because I've actually maxed out this train as well. So you'll see the pose comes down, and there we go. If I click on that, you'll tell me the, it tells me the waiting time. Now I can speed it up if I wanted to, or I can just wait. Now Jazz has gone from the top there, and if I scroll down the menu bar, there she is located down there again with only three passengers. So once the passengers have been collected, her total is adjusted, and then someone else can look and see what they need to do. Now remember, you can upgrade the maximum passengers to 10 or reduce the service time on this one. Your choice in which way you want to do it, but I would definitely ask your hoodies for help with this one because it costs a lot of metal bars. 
Right, now I've been covering the station, I've been covering the town, I've talked about all the buildings, I've gone through the whole of the menu. I hope you like this video and it gives you a lot of information. Now there are some other videos I've made as well, like the neighborhood message one. I've also talked about not chopping down your trees because of the autumn decoration. Now remember, if you do like my videos, subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit that bell notification. Also, you've got the thumbs up or thumbs down, whether you liked it or didn't like it. But most of all, please do leave comments below in the videos. Let me know your thoughts and feelings about this update. But in the meantime, I'm back to collecting my prizes, playing my town. I will see you next time. Take care, have fun, and have a happy heyday now. Goodbye, all.